Hey guys, this is Kerry, and in this video we're going to be talking about fonts with CSS. So fonts is actually a pretty important and pretty big topic when it comes to styling your web pages. So the first thing that we're going to do is I want to introduce you to what we're going to be doing in class. We're going to be creating a tech blog, and it's going to have a couple of different HTML pages that all uh, sort of are responses to different media that we'll be looking at. So one of them is going to be a response to a YouTube video. I think that's going to be the first one we do. So uh, the first thing you're going to be doing when you start this project is you're going to create the main HTML framework. Title could be uh, probably more specific than this, but I'm going to call this tech blog one because this page is going to be the first entry in my tech blog. Now I'm going to go into the body of the page. I'm going to add an h1 header, which is, uh, I don't know, entry one, an h2 header, uh, and the name of the video I think that we're going to be watching. It's all subject to change, but I think it's going to be humans need not apply. And it's a really interesting video about how technology uh, has sort of replaced people in a way that you might not even realize it's replacing us in the workforce. Humans need not apply. So now uh, I've got everything set up. I'll give it a save and a refresh. Looking good. And so uh, time to enter some paragraphs. And rather than actually enter in some paragraphs to respond to this, I'm going to actually just use that uh, hipster ipsum text generator to generate some hip words. So I'm going to go to that and then I'm going to click this button and it generates a whole bunch of uh, just random text. Uh, I'll go with the second one. And maybe my blog entry is going to be a couple of paragraphs long. So I'll grab this and I'll just copy and paste it a couple of times. And now I've got a couple of paragraphs of text. Obviously, your content is going to matter for this one. The last thing I'm going to add to my page is an image because every good blog post should have an image. So remember, IMG tab. And then you've got to add your source and your alt. So uh, let me just go to Google Image Search and I don't know, computer. So I type in computer images. And we've got this great picture of a computer right here. So I'll start with this one, control click, copy image address, which you guys actually figured out is a quick way to get the URL for the image right here. And my alt text for a screen reader would be a computer. So I'll give it a save, I'll give it a refresh, and now my tech blog is starting to come together. So we've learned a lot about styling. Uh, and just to review, to create some style on the web page, you go into the head of the document. And below the title, you start typing in the opening tag for a style. Then this menu comes up right here. And you press either tab or enter. And it generates your opening and closing style tag. Uh, and now here's where we put all the style. Uh, so first things first. Uh, we're just going to really focus on font today, I think, uh, because I don't want to go through the same things as the last video. Uh, all right, so fonts. How do they work? Uh, well, the easiest way to do fonts is this. So I'm going to start by styling the header one here. So my header one, to put a font there, that I uh, use the CSS selector H1, and then I use the property font family. Now, the font family that you choose can be any font that's on your computer to start, and then I'm going to show you some other ways that you can add fonts to your web page. So to see all the fonts on your computer, you can actually type in font book in Spotlight, which, sorry, let me do that again. Click this little magnifying glass and then font book. And this is a little book that contains all the fonts on your computer. And sometimes you have to be a little careful about these, but most of the time you can choose any font in here. So I'm going to start by trying phosphate out. So phosphate semicolon, save and refresh. And that changes the font, and I actually kind of like that. Uh, I do think that I want to spread out the letters more, so if you did letter spacing, uh, I don't know, something like five pixels maybe? Uh, that's a little too far. Three pixels. Uh, save it, refresh it. That looks a little better to me. To do font size, you do font size, and I don't know, something like 30 pixels. Oop, that's too small. Maybe uh, 40 pixels would be better. OK, great. So it's starting to look pretty good. Uh, but the key thing here was font family. So this actually has some problems. These fonts are the fonts that are on my computer. But I'm not guaranteed that these fonts will also be on your computer. So we run into a bit of a problem, which is if I make this my web page, it's going to try to load the phosphate font from your font book. But you may not have this font installed. So what is frequently done with fonts is frequently we provide backup choices. So a backup choice might be, uh, for this one, I don't know, something like Onyx, uh, something like, and you can provide multiple backups so that even if somebody's missing that, they have uh, a backup. And I don't think that the, some of these characters will actually work, but let's just see. Uh, sorry, I seem to only be able to click 
ones with foreign characters, and I don't know that those will work, so let me try Microsoft Himalaya. And I've made a mistake. Uh, I need to put commas there, not M's. So save it, refresh it, and nothing changes. So this is sort of like a, a checklist, a flowchart. It tries the first one. If you have the first one, it uses that. But let me make a typo. So let me pretend that I accidentally typed that for the first one. This font is not on my computer. So what's going to happen is it's going to try this one, and then it will default to this one afterwards. So let's save it and refresh it. And you can see that now it's using that Onyx font from the font book. All right. So you can choose specific fonts like this, but there's a safer way that you can do fonts. So one safe way to do fonts is to choose not a specific font name when you type these in, but actually a specific font family, uh, family of fonts. So what I mean by that is you might have heard of this word serif or sans serif. So serif fonts, let me just refresh, save this and refresh it. Uh, so now it's back to the normal font. Serif fonts are fonts that have these little red decorators. And then sans serif fonts, sans meaning without, so without serif fonts, are fonts that don't have those little decorators. So in general, a rule of thumb is sans serif fonts tend to be easier to read. So for a paragraph, frequently, rather than using the default font, which actually has those decorators, you would say, make the font family here, uh, the sans serif font family. And you can see immediately that it color codes it differently. It color codes it as light blue. And the reason why this happens is this is not a specific font. Any computer will work with this. It will load the default sans serif font for the paragraph. And so if I refresh my page, you can see that it's a little more readable because it doesn't have those decorators. Um, in contrast, for headers and things like that, sometimes those serifs can add flavor to it, extra seriousness, or a decorative quality. So uh, if I wanted to guarantee that these would be serif family fonts, then I could do that for the header one. And you'll notice it doesn't change because your computer default-wise with HTML uses serif fonts. These aren't the only font families, though. So in terms of font families, there are two more that I want to look at. One is called monospace. So monospace turns blue because it's a font family, not a specific font like the ones we saw earlier. And if we do this, it creates this. And uh, you might have different feelings about this font. Maybe it invokes a production script to you or a typewriter. But these are called monospace because every letter has the exact same width as the next letter. So regardless of what the letter or number is, it takes up the exact same width of space. Um, all right, what's next? There's one more font that you might find interesting called cursive. And cursive looks a little bit fancy like that. So uh, the way that we frequently use these font families with the font book is, let's say I want to use the font Arial which is a famous font. So I would make my header Arial, which you'll notice color codes in gold because it's not actually a font family, it's a specific font. And now, rather than choosing a specific font from my book, font book as the backup, I'm gonna try to make a decision which font family should be the backup. So if you look at Arial, try to figure out, is this serif or sans serif? So let me put those up. Well, you can see that it's missing a lot of those red decorators. So this actually has sans serif without serifs as the font. So what you might do here is you could say Arial is the first choice, and then sans serif is the next choice. And this will color code to blue because it's a font family. So now we'll refresh it, and I think that's Arial. But if I misspelled Arial, now it will change to a very similar looking font that maintains the flavor, the feel of the web page. Uh, without changing too much. And this will work on any computer because sans serif is a family, not a specific font. All right, so you can have as many of these fonts listed out, but the, usually a good rule of thumb is you want to end with a font family. Now the last thing I want to show you with fonts is, uh, rather than using fonts from your computer, there are actually great resources online that store fonts online. And these fonts are accessible for any computer. So let me show you what I mean. My favorite one of these is called Google Fonts. So uh, Google Fonts is a collection of fonts that you can use for free. Most fonts actually cost money, but a collection of fonts that you can use for free uh, on your web page. So as you peruse through this, perhaps you like this Monsalva font. Uh, if you wanted to use this, you could click this little plus sign here, and then it will pop up some code at the bottom. And if you click on that code, and you click this little uh, 
arrow right here, it actually gives you a couple lines of code. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to supply a link for your web page to sort of access that font from. So you're going to take this uh, element and you're going to paste this somewhere in between the title and the style. And it's important that you paste this link before the style. The reason why is your style is going to actually try to access this information. And if you haven't linked it before the style, when you try to use this font, it won't work. Now, what it's telling me is that the, uh, sorry, the property value pair should look like this for Monsalva. So they're telling me a couple of things here. Use Monsalva as the main font, and you can put it in quotes if it's multiple words. Uh, and then the default font should be cursive with this one because it has a mostly cursive feel to it. So let's give that a save and a refresh. And you can see that now it's using the Monsalva font. So this is my favorite way to use fonts because Google has a great collection of fonts, but also I'm guaranteed that because I'm linking this font, which is freely available on Google, that everyone will see my web page in the same way. If I use fonts for my font book, there's no guarantee that you'll have these fonts in your font book either. Uh, I think that that's going to be everything for fonts. Let me just add one more font from Google. Uh, so to add a font from Google one more time, go back to this, scroll through it, and let's see. I think for the body of it, this railway font looks very uh, nice. It seems easy to read, so let me add that. Now I've got two font families selected, so I'm going to get rid of the Monsalva one. I'm going to click this little arrow, and it tells me, okay, first you need to embed the font. So take this link. I'll put that at the same indentation level as the last link. And then nextly, when I use my paragraphs, instead of just using sans serif, I'm going to use this little line of CSS so that it tries to use the uh, railway font. And then if it doesn't have that, it defaults to the sans serif font family. So give it a save and a refresh. And now we've got this nice font for our body. And of course, there are a load of things that you can do with this. Letter spacing, uh, I don't know. Maybe you want to space the letters out more. Four pixels. Whoa, it's a little too spaced out. Three pixels. Cool, that looks good. Uh, line height, maybe make it double spaced, so 20 pixels. Well, it's not really double spaced, 25 pixels. And by playing around with these values, I think you're going to be able to customize your font to a place where you really like what you see. So I hope that this added a new layer to your CSS knowledge without adding too much. And you'll have a free chance to work on your own tech blog tomorrow, uh, including the styling and everything like that. See you tomorrow. Bye.